coming in, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? God bless you. You know that anytime the Lord, come on, somebody, give a word, you know it's going to be good. So go ahead and share the video. Go ahead and share the video. Share the video. Share the video. Sign on. Sign on. Sign on. Want to just first of all thank God. Oh my goodness. For all the things that He is doing. For all the things that He has done. Praise God. Praise God. Getting, getting everything situated. God bless you all. How are you all today? Oh my goodness, Miss Gwendolyn, bless you. Miss Chrissy, bless you. Miss Paulette, bless you. We also, you guys, I know we have been very, very busy with the retreat that we did in Baton Rouge. So we kind of got away just a little bit from our every Friday conference calls, okay? And of course, that conference call is, is for women redefined as well as men be renewed. So we are going to start posting those conference calls information and we want you to just sign in during that time. It's going to be every Friday at 6 p.m. and we're just going to usher in the presence of God so that he can meet us there on those phone calls. want to deal with whatever issues is dealing with you. Of course, you all know that I am a licensed counselor, so I deal with therapeutic situations situations and therapeutic um circumstances however we just want to just combine our faith in god with our psychology or our therapeutic background just to make sure that you are healed and whole and made anew in every area that you hurt go ahead and share the video share the video share the video just to start off um prophetically god has just really just opened up and just allowed me to see some of the things that he is doing in the realm of the spirit. Come on, y'all. So we know that we're signing in because we want to understand how is it that we can allow God to love us in life's gaps, okay? So life gaps represents the part of your life that doesn't make sense. It's the things that you know, it's like, okay, I wasn't anticipating that phone call. I wasn't anticipating, um, you know, some people might be going through a divorce. Some people might have gotten fired from their job. So how do you allow God, how do you feel the love and feel the presence of God in those vulnerable moments? Go ahead and share the video. That is what we want to address on today. However, before we get to that, I love you so much, Christy Buggish. I love you, lady. Thank you. Before we get to that, we have to thank God for the things that he has already done. We have to thank him because what God is getting ready to do for you, I see doors, large doors opening up in the realm of the spirit. I see these doors are so large that you're going to understand why you had to cry the way that you cried. You're going to understand why you had to fight the way that you fought. You're going to understand why people had to leave out of your life because they were not ready for this breakthrough. Many of us have been pressing God and it's like, okay, God, what's the big deal? We're ready for this thing to happen. Big, small, or large, whatever that it is. However, we don't understand the weight of glory that comes along with this. We don't understand the weight that it costs in order to make this thing come to pass has in the realm of the spirit so that it can be manifested here on earth and it's almost like a child you know when God when you have a teenager and that teenager is telling you look mom I'm ready to get a car I'm ready to get a car you know maybe she's 16 17 and she's ready to start driving well that child does not understand how much that car note is gonna cost come on somebody she does not understand that not only do she have to pay a car note but all of a 
sudden she's going to need monthly insurance. So this thing is almost a $600, maybe $700 monthly bill that's going to be coming in to that parent. So many of us, we've been saying, well, God, what's the big deal? We're ready for this new job. We're ready to open up this company. We're ready to start our family. We're ready for our healing. But we don't understand what all God has to do in the realm of the spirit so that he can pay that monthly bill for what it is that he's getting ready to do in your life. This thing is major. This thing is big. Everything is against you as it relates to some of us, as it relates to generational curses. Some people in our family cannot usher us into this new thing. Some people, our mentors, come on somebody, cannot usher us into this new thing. Some of these people, our friends cannot understand the volume or the weight in which this thing is carrying as it relates to your ministry, your life, your health, your wealth, your prosperity, restoration in your marriage. And so when you are waiting, come on y'all, thank you so much for the love. That's right, hit those hearts and share the video. Hit those hearts and share the video. When you are waiting, you have to learn how to praise God. That's just like if you have a child that is waiting for that teenage child that's waiting for you to give her that car, then you want that child to start saying, thank you, mom, for the shoes that you have bought. You want that child to start saying, thank you, mom, that you've been going to my school and, and battling teachers or battling other kids that's been picking on me. You want to start thanking that mom and start thanking that dad for what she's already doing. And that's going to usher her, come on, somebody, to do that next big thing that you have been believing in her to do. And so I want us right where we're at to just start saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for food that you have put on our table. Thank you, Lord God, that we are clothed in our right mind. Thank you, Jesus, that when the enemy came in, he was destroyed as a flood. Come on now. We want to start saying even the enemies that stood up and rose up against us, they were defeated defeated in the name of Jesus. We want to just start saying thank you God for the job that we do have. Thank you Lord God for the clothes that is on our backs. Thank you Lord God for the things that we often take for granted. Thank you Lord God that our bills are paid. Thank you Jesus that we have a family. We have friends that we can talk to. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord God. We do not take it for granted Lord God the sacrifice that your son Jesus Christ made on the cross. We do not take our local churches for granted where we're able to go there and fellowship weekly. We thank you, God, for the ministries and the things that you have placed down on the inside of our belly that is getting ready to be made manifest even in this hour. God, we thank you, Lord God, for the marriages that are out there. We thank you, Lord God, for the multiplication and the promotions that are on the way. God, we thank you, God, for what you did on yesterday, Lord God, because you did not have to do it. It. But because you are a good God, because you are a merciful God, it was nothing that we had did on our own. It was nothing that we deserved. It was not by any good acts or good deeds on our own. But God, it was for your grace, Lord God, and your mercy. So for this, Jesus, we give you praise, Lord God. We don't wait for the breakthrough, the next breakthrough to come in. We thank God for this breakthrough. We thank God for the last breakthrough. God, we usher in praise, glory, and honor to you right now. So the first thing you have to do when you are in life's gaps, praise God for you, Miss Chanel Shepherd. Praise God for you, Miss Loretta. Thank God for you all. The first thing you have to do, make sure that you share the video, share the video. The first thing that you have to do is begin to thank God. Because the devil is going to try to show you everything that's missing. He's going to try to remind you of everything that's broken. He's going to try to constantly re rewind that tape of shame. Come on, that's right, Miss Kimberly. That tape of shame. That's it, Miss Lietti. He's going to try to rewind that tape of failure, that tape of defeat, that tape of shame. But you got to overcome that with your praise. You got to overcome that and say, God, what you did on yesterday, you are no short of God today. 
today than you was on yesterday. So if you were able to bless me on yesterday, if you was able to heal me on yesterday, if you was able to send the marriage on yesterday, surely you can restore it today. Surely you can multiply my dwelling place today. Surely you can enlarge my territory today. So you have to let the devil know I am not worried about what left. I am not worried about what was lost. I am not worried about the defeat that have set itself before me that have placed me in this life's gap. I'm not worried about that at all because what God did on yesterday, my gosh, he can do even greater on today if I have the faith, hope, and expectation for him to do just that. So what is also happening in the realm of the spirit, you guys, come on somebody, want y'all to know that large doors are opening up. You have prayed, you have cried, you have fasted, you have waited, you have been good stewards, you have sold. Large doors are opening up. This is not just a Facebook live to talk about what you left and to encourage you in that gap. This is a Facebook live that's getting ready to prepare you to cross over. This is getting ready to prepare you to cross over. Yes, we're going to talk about the storm that takes place right before you cross over. We're going to talk about those experiences. We understand that before Jesus Christ was resurrected after three days, he first had to die. He first had to suffer the cross. Yes, we're going to talk about what you lost. We're going to talk about the lack. We're going to talk about that, but we're going to only talk about that for a moment because just as Miss Buggish have just clearly stated, suddenly that cross over is getting ready to take place. Suddenly that resurrection is getting ready to come. Suddenly that restoration is getting ready to take place. So this is a Facebook Live to prepare you in your final moment as what your promise, your miracle, your breakthrough, your final moments before your breakthrough come forth. My gosh, this is your final moment before the weight of glory is resting on your life and all of the enemies will be sitting there at your table. Come on. This is that final moment. My God, thank you, Jesus. That final moment where the blood of Jesus is getting ready to open up that door because you know that it will not be by your power. It would not have been by your might. It was not have been because you were perfect, but it is all by the blood of Jesus. And so that is why we give him praise. That that is why we give him honor. That is why we thank him and we adore him even on this hour because this is your final moment before you are getting ready to cross over in victory. We know that 2017 is a year of victory. Well, I'm here to tell you right now that the hour has yet now come that your victory is knocking on your door. Come on, somebody. Will you not perceive it? Will you not perceive? it. Yes, we want you to receive that even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go right into the message. Thank you, God. We are going to walk through the word a little bit. Praise God. And God is going to meet us here. First, what we're going to talk about is what do you do, my gosh, when you are in life's gaps? What do you do when you're in between miracles, when you're in between blessings, you're in between breakthrough? What do you do? Well, first of all, we do have a part to play, although we are going to eventually get to the part that Jesus does because it's during that time that his love is ever more so evident. It is during that time that his presence is so close to us. My gosh, I will never forget. I was going through a hard, 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 hard time in my life. And even as I was walking into the door of my home, I had my keys out. I was getting ready to go into my home, had calamity or at my agency, had calamity even as it related to ministry. Calamity was in my finances. Calamity was in my relationships. And I was just going through an alone season, although Jesus, although God had told me to prepare for an alone season. But how many of you all know that when that thing hit and I was going through all of that turmoil, come on somebody, I was um, I was really going through. I want you all to share the video. Please share the video and hit those hearts for me. Praise God and thank you for doing so. That's your participation. And as I 
I was walking in my house during that alone season of just brokenness, calamity everywhere I turned around. As I turned the doorknob, as I was going in, I felt the presence of God as though he was a person walking into my home with me. You know how you have your kids that's right behind you or your husband is right behind you or your friend is right behind you. When as I was going into that house and turning the doorknob, I felt a person, just the presence of God walking in with me. And it was as though he was saying, and you know, even though it was as though he was saying, though he was slaying me at that time time, yet was I going to trust him? Yet was I going to let him be my source? Because when you're in life's gaps, sometimes all you have is God. You may not even understand why you're going through it. You may not even understand why the timing is the way that it is. Why this loss has come at the timing that it is. But even when you go through life's gaps, God's presence is with you ever so more, ever so clear, ever all the more during that time and so I wanted to share that with you just as my testimony because when you're going through the Bible does say clearly that I will never leave you nor forsake you I want you to share the video praise God I will never leave you nor forsake you so it's at that time when he need uh, when we need him the most that he is not that he is right there because he is not going to leave you he's not gonna forsake you. Yes, you've gone through this. Yes, it hit your household. Yes, it hit your finances, but he is not going to leave you. He is not a God that he should lie, that he should lie. The Bible says that if you put your faith in him, and of course I'm paraphrasing this, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will not be made a shame. So you are going to bounce back. This thing, the enemy is going to wish he never would have tried you because we understand that when you catch that thief of an enemy, he has to pay you back sevenfold. So your sevenfold is on the way. Your rep your reparations is on the way. Your restoration is on the way. And God's presence is with you even right now. Will you not perceive it that it is so? So we come here and want you all to share the video. That's right, y'all. Love you right back. Hit those hearts for me. Share the video. Yo, love you so much, Miss Buggage. That is my girl. Bless you, William Roberts. Bless you, Kimberly. Bless you, Miss Lolita. Bless you, Lisa Clark. Bless you, Miss Lula Lewis. God bless you all. Let's go right in here to this message because I don't want to hold you long on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. But we're going to start right here with Mark Matthew 26. My gosh, bless you as well, Miss Lietta. And it talks about right here, it says, when the chief priest, it talks about the anointing at Bethany. And it says, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, and we're going to skip down. And it says, when his disciple, it says right here in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him, my gosh, having an alabaster jar, a very expensive ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at supper. See, this is what you have to do when you're in life's gaps. When you are waiting for that thing to take place, we're going to give you some instructions for your part on this thing. And so right here, it talks about this lady anointed Jesus. And it says when his disciples saw it, they were indignant. And what they said, they are basically was like, look, this could have went to the poor. They said, for what purpose is this waste? So they said that the lady was wasting the oil out of her alabaster box. This anointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor when Jesus perceived it he said to them why do you trouble the woman she has done a good work for me for you have had the you will you for you have the poor always with you but you do not always have me and pouring this ointment on my body she did it for my burial truly I say to you wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world what this woman has done will be told in memory of her one thing we're looking at when you're in life's gaps, you have to begin 
to pour out your alabaster box unto the Lord. You have to begin to pour out your tears unto him. You have to begin to cry out to him. You have to begin to surrender and say, God, look, have your way. Whatever it is that you want me to do, whatever it is that you've been trying to get my attention, if you allow this thing to come into my life to get my attention, God, I give it to you. If you want control over my life, if this brokenness have come in as to heed a warning, God, I give it to you. So you have to do what that lady did when you're in life's gaps. You have to learn how to break that alabaster box. A lot of us are going through problems. You have went through turmoil. I want you to share the video. Share the video. You have went through turmoil because there are some things in your life that you're trying to keep for yourself. There is some things that you don't want to let God in to control it. You don't want to let him in to have his say so. You still want to control the situation. You still want to manipulate. You still want to be the decision maker. But when you are in life's gaps, one thing you have to learn how to do is to break that alabaster box. You have to say, God, I give it all to you. No matter the cost of the alabaster box, no matter the oil that it took, no matter how many tears that you found, God, I give it to you. I turn it over to you. I surrender. Even if it is in the area of relationships, if it's in the area of marriage, even if it's in the area of finances, God is trying to get your attention if you are in life's gaps. He's saying it's a method that you're doing that is not working. And he's saying, I want to bless you. I want to multiply you. I want to promote you, but you're not doing it my way. You're not allowing me to be in control. You're not doing it by my principles. So if I took this job, it's because you was not tithing on the job. If I took that relationship, it's because you had placed that relationship as an idol before me. If I took it away from you and allowed you to be in life's gaps, it's because I need you to shift and give that thing to me. God cannot get you out of it if you won't release it. He cannot get your marriage restored if you won't get your hands off of it. If you won't get your mouth off of it. If you won't get your will out of his way. He cannot multiply the ministry if you're too busy micromanaging it. So you have to break that alabaster box and give it to God. My God, thank you, Lord. And I want you all to share the video, share the video. So you have to break that alabaster box when you are in life's gaps. You have to say, God, I trust you. God, I surrender. I give it to you. The next thing we take a look at right here, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. When you are in life's gaps, you have to watch what you say. You have to watch the words that you use. Jesus give us a powerful example right here and we know that he was prophesying. We know that he had to say this, but in our cases, we do not have to replicate that very example. Jesus says right here, in pulling this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. He was speaking of his burial. He said, truly I say to you, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told in memory of her. And then it says, immediately after that, praise God, I want you all to share the video. Immediately after that, we understand that then one of the 12 who was called Judas Iscariot, immediately after that, one of the 12 who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said to them, what will you give me if I hand him over to you? And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. From that moment, he searched for an opportunity to betray him. And so you have to look at this thing in twofold. Number one, y'all, at the pinnacle of Jesus Christ's life, my gosh, you got this lady, this lady have bust open an expensive alabaster box to pour on Jesus Christ. At the pinnacle of his life, not only was he met with a great experience, but immediately after that, he was betrayed. That is a word for some 
some of us right there. Some of us, you're at the pinnacle of your ministry. You're at the pinnacle of your breakthrough. You're at the pinnacle of areas in your life. And how many of you all know that when you are at that pinnacle, sometimes the enemy will send somebody close to you to try to pull you down. He will send a hater, somebody jealous. He will send a Jezebel, somebody to try to gossip about you, to try to pull you off that high horse. Here it is, Jesus Christ was, was getting anointed for his burial. It was not even about him being promoted. It was not even about him being puffed up. And But see, Judas did not see it that way. The only thing that Judas saw is that this lady loved Jesus enough to break an expensive oil. He did not even see that this man was getting ready to go to the cross. He did not even see that this lady was preparing him for a very dark moment. And that's what the thing is. A lot of our haters, they don't even see the cross that you had to bear. They don't even see the crosses that you will have to bear. The only thing they see is the blessing. The only thing they see is the greatness. And because of that, he sought an opportunity. That's what the Bible says to betray Jesus at a moment where Jesus should have been getting celebrated at a moment where the disciples should have been congratulating him at a moment where they should have been lifting him up and joining in with that lady for the alabaster box. Instead of them joining in, Judas slipped away and was seeking an opportunity to betray him. Do you have friends around you that is looking to betray you? Do you have prayer partners that is looking to betray you? Do you have co-workers that is looking to betray you? I tell you, if you do, you have to separate yourself even now and begin to pray as we're going to see that Jesus Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane. We did also say this, when you are in life's gaps, you have to watch what you say. You have to watch the power of your words. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that. It says right here, Jesus said in pouring this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. So Jesus had already spoke his burial into existence. He had already spoken and he said, that's exactly what he said, for you have the poor always with you, but you do not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. And because he had spoken into existence, because he knew from the foundation of the earth that he would have to die. But because he had spoke his burial into existence, his words automatically put Judas on a trip. <laughs> his words automatically activated Judas. All of a sudden on the next verse, it says then one of the twelve. So Judas was not even looking to betray him until Jesus spoke the word. Judas was not even worried about betraying him. But the minute that Jesus comes Confess. He said, look, I know that I have been feeding people with the fish and the, and the, the five loaves of bread. He said, I know that I've been preaching the gospel. He said, I know that I have a following. He said, but guess what? Let me tell you, I don't even come here to just do miracle signs and wonder. He said, I don't even come here just to feed the 5,000, to feed the people. He said, I don't even come here just to have a disciple following. He then unveiled it. He said, look, I've come here that I might die on the cross for your sins. I've come here that you might live life more abundantly. And the minute that he spoke and he said, and this lady in pouring this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. He said, I'm here for a greater cause than what you might think. I am here for a greater thing than what you have seen and experienced. I am here that all that believe in me would have everlasting life and life more abundantly. So when he spoke it with his mouth that the lady was preparing him for his burial, immediately it activated Judas Iscariot. Immediately it says, then one of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said to them, what will you give me if I hand him over to you? Because Jesus had already spoke his burial. And they said, 
and they paid him 30 pieces of silver. From that moment, he searched for an opportunity to betray him. So not only do you have to break your alabaster box, my gosh, that sensitive thing, that place of your hurt, that place of your pain, make sure you share the video. Not only do you have to break that alabaster box, that thing that you've been holding on to, that thing that you've been keeping secret, that thing that you want to try to keep God out of, not only do you have to break that alabaster box, but you have to watch the words that you speak because the words that you speak have death and life and the power of your tongue and you will eat the good thereof so if you speak life my gosh if you speak that you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord then restoration and life will be your portion Jesus had to speak burial because he was here he came here to die but if you speak death then death will be your portion so you have to watch your words make sure you share the video on top of that you have to understand that the minute that they talked about this lady's alabaster box they said when his disciples saw it they were indignant saying for what purpose is this waste this uh, this ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor see some people don't understand that the cost of your alabaster box has to deal with the anointing that God is placing on your life. Some people alabaster box costs more. Your pain is more. Your suffering is more. Your gap is bigger. The thing you have to go through, you may not understand on a larger scale because the anointing that God is placing on your life once you break your alabaster box is bigger than the average anointing. It's going to cover more ground. It's going to cover more territory. Therefore, it's going to cost you more. It's not going to be just a little anointing to just get up there and do a little something and sit down. This is a big thing. And so because this was a big thing that this lady was doing, because it was a big thing that she was anointing Jesus Christ to die on the cross, that's why her alabaster box cost more. That's why the sum of the cost of it is what provoked the disciples to say, what has warranted this waste? This ointment might have been sold for a large sum. They didn't understand that the reason why it was a large sum, the reason why the oil was so valuable, uh, valuable is because of what the oil was getting ready to do. Because of what the oil was getting ready to prepare Jesus Christ to face the cross. And so for us, if you're in a life gap situation, I want you to share the video. If you're in a life gap situation and this thing is pressing you like an olive oil if it's costing you more than what you wanted to give up if it is giving you more sleepless nights and more nights of crying and more wailing nights than what you had ever expected in your life be not dismayed be not discouraged if it's lasting longer than the season that you thought it would last be not dis be not dismayed begin to praise God begin to thank God because your oil is going to be touching the nation your oil is getting ready to break the generational curses off of your family. Your oil is getting ready to shake up the community as you know it. And that is why your oil costs you so much. Because it's not just about what it costs you as much as it is about what that oil is getting ready to prep you to do. What it's getting ready to prep you to accomplish. And so they could not bring no cheap oil to Jesus Christ to die on the cross. <laughs> They could not bring no oil that was only three pence. They had to bring some oil that was going to get the job done. And that's what God is pressing out of your life right now. Enough oil to get the job done so that it would overflow even in your next season. Even in generations to come will be touched, my gosh, by the oil and the cost of your oil that is on your life. Let's carry on. And then it says, my gosh. So... Thank you all. I want you to share the video. So what you have to do is break that alabaster box. The next thing that you have to do is watch the words that you speak. The next thing that you have to do is this right here. And it says that they went into the garden of Gethsemane. 
And it says that they began to pray. That's right. Go into the city and they said it to him and, and they began to pray. And we understand that even in the garden of Gethsemane, it was saying, the Lord said, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Wait here and keep watch with me. And so you, we learned here the importance of having to surrender when you are in life's gaps. You have to surrender, not my will, but thy will be done. So you have to surrender. Another thing you have to understand is this right here. You may not have people to go with you when you are in prayer while you're in life's gaps. You may not have a prayer partner that's going to pray you through your situation. You may not have a person that has enough faith that you need to pull you across this gap. You have to begin to pray for yourself. Jesus Christ, he asked the disciples, could you watch with me and so that you don't fall in temptation. He was not necessarily focusing on him. He told them, he said, you need to pray. And of course, I'm paraphrasing that you will not fall into temptation. He said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so Jesus already understood, look, I cannot depend on the prayer of my mother. I cannot depend on the prayer of my pastor. I cannot depend on the faith of my disciples. I got to do this thing for myself. When you're in life's gaps, you have to go for yourself. We're going to go right here and it says on the first day of the feast, and we're skipping around a little bit. On the first day of the feast, the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man. My gosh, we get to the good part. I love it. And say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So we understand that Jesus Jesus was such a good shepherd. And this is where we want to talk about the love of Jesus. We've been talking about what it is that you have to do. That's why you do have to break that alabaster box. Yes, you do have to go into prayer all for yourself. Come on, somebody. Yes, you do have to watch your words. But then you have to fall into the loving arms of Jesus. The reason why you have to fall into his loving arms is because only he is going to be able to get you the victory out of this situation. Only he is going to be able to answer your prayer. Only he is going to be able to restore you. Only he is going to be able to weigh your sacrifice in the balance. And he's going to be able to say, what she, did she do what it is that I was asking him to do? Did he do what I was asking her to do? He's going to weigh that sacrifice in the balance and make a decision to say, okay, now we're going to be releasing that blessing because she's ready for it. Now now we're going to be releasing that promotion because he is ready for that. But in order for you to have faith that your God, my gosh, I want you all to share the video, set another brother and sister free. Love you all so much. Continue to hit those hearts. Continue to hit those hearts and share the video. But the only thing that's going to keep you rooted and grounded in the fact that God is going to promote you, the only thing that's going to keep you rooted and grounded is the fact that God is going to elevate you and restore you. The only thing that's going to keep you rooted is knowing his love for you. You got to know that he has not left you in this thing by yourself. You have to know that he cares about every tear that you have cried. You have to know that he is touched by the feeling of your infirmity that when you are sad and sorrowful so is he as it relates to how he feels concerning you. When I was going through that hard dark period in my life Jesus was right there. The spirit of the Holy Spirit was right there walking into my house with me. He was there to comfort me, not because he needed my company, but because I needed his. So you have to know, I want you all to share the video and hit those hearts. You have to know that faith working with love. So how in the world can you believe that a God is going to love you enough to promote you? He's going to love you enough to answer your prayers. If you don't know a hundred percent beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is a loving God, that he loves you and he has not left you in this situation. 
situation by yourself. Your faith is going to work according to the knowledge of you knowing that he loves you too much to leave you destitute. He loves you too much to leave you unprovided for. He loves you too much to leave you alone. He loves you too much to see you in that gap all by yourself. He loves you too much to abandon you and to neglect you. It's his love that's going to make him answer that prayer. It's his love that's going to make him elevate you. It is his love for you that's going to see you restored and promoted and out of that situation. We began to see the love of God even right here. I want you all to share the video and hit those hearts for me. We begin to see the love of God because even though Jesus Christ was getting ready to die, my gosh, even though he was preparing for his burial and he knew that he was preparing for his burial, even though his disciple had turned his back on him and was beginning to betray him, Jesus did not at all begin to focus on himself. But Jesus said, I love my bride so much that even though I'm preparing for death, let me still remain a teacher for them. Let me put back to the side the cross that I'm getting ready to have to carry. Let me put the weight of this thing down and let me still be a teacher to my sheep. And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my gosh, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Why is that important? He said the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. And why is that important that Jesus was taking this moment to teach? Because it is at this moment that he taught them the importance of how to apply his, how to take of his bread. My gosh. It's at that moment that he was teaching them how to apply, how to take of his blood. He did not get so consumed with the trial that was before him to where he left all of that out. But he went on anyway and taught them the importance of taking of his bread, taking of his flesh, taking of his blood. And he was letting them know that my goodness, no matter what it is that you're getting ready to go through, my gosh, if you could apply the blood of Jesus on it, you're going to make it out of this thing. No matter what your family look like, no matter what your circumstance look like, if you apply the resurrected blood of Jesus, that thing can be restored. That thing can be healed. So he took time out even while he was preparing for his burial, even while he was preparing to die. He yet remained a loving teacher. He yet remained giving to where he did not think of himself, but he thought of others. And he thought enough of us to take time out to show us how to break and eat of his bread, to show us how to drink and drink from his blood. The blood of the river that will never run dry. The blood that will cause demons to back out of your situation. The blood that if you if you profess the blood of Jesus, there is no giant that can stand before you. There is no demonic force that can come before you. There is no witchcraft that can stand before you. There is no defeat that can stand before you. If you would just apply the blood of Jesus, then you will have victory even in life's gaps. But Jesus took enough. He loved us enough to take time out, my gosh, to teach us that. What if he would have died and had not taught us how to take of his blood and how to eat of his body? What if he would have passed over on that cross and did not take time to give us that teaching moment? My gosh, we would all, we would all, we would all be in trouble. And it says right here, one thing that you want to pay attention to when you're in life's gaps as well. It says, then Judas, my gosh, it says right here, it would have been good. It, we're going to go up. Son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Yes, it says, woe to the man. So G Jesus even began to warn his betrayer. 
If Jesus loved his betrayer enough to warn him, how much more do you think that Jesus loved you even in the midst of what you're going through? How much more do you think that Jesus is rooting for you as his child, as his, sh as his sheep in this situation? Jesus began to warn his betrayer and he says, son of man, he says, he who has dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. That's what he said. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. So Jesus began to warn even his betrayer. And then Judas who betrayed him answered, Master is it I? He said to him, you have said it. Now let's think about if this was a Sunday school lesson or let's say if this was Bible study and all of a sudden Jesus began to preach about I'm getting ready to be betrayed and woe to the man that's getting ready to betray me. And so you might say if Judas showed up at that Bible study, which he did, you might say that that was an on-time word for Judas. That might have been a word for Judas to rethink if he really wanted to betray the Son of Man. That might have been a word that would have pulled him out of doing that thing that he had set in his heart to do. Come on, somebody. And so even as it says, then Judas who betrayed him answered, Master, is it I? So Judas knew that that word applied to him. And when you're in life's gaps, God is going to send shepherds that's going to minister directly to your situation. God is going to send teachers that's going to teach directly on your situation. Now you can do what Judas did. You can hear the word and still go in the wrong direction, or you can hear the word and turn as it relates to what you're doing and move into the direction and the will of God. So when you are in in life's gaps. I want you all to share the video, share the video, hit those hearts. When you are in life's gaps, you have to become sensitive to hearing from God. Je Jesus was ministering directly to Judas' situation. He already knew that Judas was had went to the high priest and that they were giving him the money and he was seeking for an opportunity to betray him. And so because Jesus already knew it, he gave that word as a warning to Judas to say, Judas, this is not what you want to do. But all too often we're in life's gaps and we go to Bible study or we listen to messages and here it is. God is teaching directly on our situation. Just like Judas said, then Judas who betrayed him answered, Master, is it I? We're sitting up there and you know that it is I. You know that it is you. But even like Judas, you still go in that direction instead of turning away from it. So we have to be sensitive when you are in life's gaps. To hear a word from God, it might be a word of correction. It might be a word of rebuke, but whatever it is, it's going to stir you in the direction of victory. But if you hear, you have to hear with your spiritual ears enough to know that it is I. It is for you and that word you do have to obey because the Bible says that it, obedience is better than sacrifice. We understand that because Judas did not obey, Judas Judas ended up hanging himself. Come on, somebody. He ended up committing suicide. So when you're in life's gaps, you don't want to disobey the sent word of God and end up hanging yourself. You don't want to end up in a situation where the thing could have been restored and given life, but yet because you did not obey, the thing ended up dying. Okay, the baby or the, the spiritual baby that you were pregnant with ended up dying. So you don't want to abort that promise. You want to adhere to the word of God. And then it says, this is when Jesus began to teach us. And he said, and they were eating. Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to his disciples. So Jesus was teaching all the way up into his death. He was teaching and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, my gosh. Then he took the cup and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant he was teaching them my gosh Jesus is teaching you even in your gap he is teaching you something he is showing you something but if you would apply the mighty blood of Jesus to it you will walk out of this thing with great victory which is and he says for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins I say to you I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from 
from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And so Jesus was teaching them how to take of his body and how to drink of his blood. But one thing that he also taught us, okay, come on somebody. He said that I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. There has to be something that you are putting on reserve for your promise. My gosh, there has to be something. Many people, you're believing in God for marriage, but you're doing everything that with Ishmael that you should be waiting to do with Isaac. There has to be something that you're going to reserve. If Jesus, even in this situation, said he could have drunk the fruit with them if he wanted to, but he said, no, 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 I'm transitioning. I'm crossing over. He said to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So in this life's gap, you have to begin to wonder what is it that God want me to reserve? Even when Adam and Eve was in the tree, there, even when Adam and Eve was in the garden, there was a tree that was put on hold. There was a tree, there was something that they were not supposed to touch. Jesus was saying he was not going to drink of that wine. What are you putting on hold? What are you saying that you're going to keep as a sacrifice for what it is that you're believing in God for? What are you putting on hold? What are you honoring as sacred? Are you honoring the, the tent of even the tithing? Are you saying, look, this tent is going to go to the Lord's house? Are you putting money on hold to make sure that you're paying your tithes and sowing your seeds of offering? Are you making your body a living sacrifice for that promise? And we said that to say that so many people you're believing in God for the promise and the miracle, but you don't want to sacrifice anything. If you're believing in God to heal your body, what are you fasting from? Are you putting anything on hold? Are you sacrificing anything? Are you consecrating anything? Are you going into a realm of holiness where you're saying, look, this is going to be cut off until I get to where it is that I'm going. And y'all, that is is the word of the Lord and we're going to close out even right here when it talks about when Jesus was risen from the dead. Amen. We understand that with Peter, before we get there, however, with Peter, Peter went through a very rough time. Okay. And this where we're getting ready to close the message out. And it says, now Peter sat outside in the courtyard. And it talked about when they sat at the table and Jesus was saying, who would betray him? And Peter was the very first one. If you read the story, amen, amen. Peter was the very first one. Make sure you share the video and hit the hearts. God bless you, Miss Buggage. Peter was the very first one that said, God, I will not betray you. That's what Peter said. But Jesus said to Peter, Peter, before the crop crows three times, you would have betrayed me. We're getting ready to bring this right here up and through your situation of life's gap and we're going to close this thing out strong in the Lord. Amen. And it says right here, now Peter sat outside in the courtyard and a girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee but he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what you are saying. Then when he went out into the porch, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. We're going to skip down here. Then immediately, then he began to invoke a curse on himself and he swore for the third time, I do not know the man. Then immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Then he went out and wept bitterly. Peter was in a situation where he was bitterly weeping. He was sorrowful. He was uncovered. The word had already went out. Jesus said, I will strike the Jesus warned them. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will fall away on account of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go before you to Galilee. So, G so Peter was experiencing 
that very prophecy come to pass because they had already struck the shepherd. And so when they struck Jesus, the sheep was scattered. So Peter was a sheep that was scattered. Peter was a sheep that was weeping. It says then after he had betrayed Jesus three times, after he had denied Jesus three times, then he went out and wept bitterly. So Peter was weeping. He felt alone, even though he had, so to speak, denied Jesus. Somewhere up in there, he probably felt that Jesus Christ had denied him. Somehow, he needed the covering of Jesus. He needed his shepherd to tell him that it was okay. He needed his shepherd to wrap his arms around him. Here it is. He had left his. He had left the job that he was doing as a fisherman. His livelihood was based on the ministry of Jesus because he no longer was a fisherman as he had become fisherman of men. He did not even have a good reputation anymore. He was not even safe because even the people that saw him immediately they knew, hey look, isn't this the guy that was with Jesus? And of course he had to deny it because he did not want his life to be on the line. No doubtedly, and even as it stated here, they said then he began it says here, after a while, those who stood by came to Peter and said, surely you also are one of them for your accent betrays you. So they were saying, you talk like you walked with this man. And that's how we have to be in life's gaps. If you are truly a child of God, your accent, your communication, your conversation should tell on you. You should not be talking like the world. Just like it said it says, after a while, those who stood by came to Peter and said, surely you also are one of them for your accent betrays you. That was saying your accent is like you walked with that man, Jesus. But we understand then he began to invoke a curse on himself and he swore, I do not know the man. And so it goes further to say, then he went out and wept bitterly. Surely, no doubtedly, he felt alone. Surely, no doubtedly, he felt sorry. Powerful. He wept bitterly. He felt uncovered. He did not know. Well, look, Jesus knew how to multiply the fish in the five loaves of bread. What am I going to do to eat? I'm out here dangerous to even be who I am because they might identify me or associate me with Jesus. Some of you all, that's how you have been in your life gap situation. You have felt no shorter than how Peter have felt. You have had sorrow. You have felt like is Jesus with me? Did God leave me uncovered in this thing? Well, if my job is gone, how am I going to provide for myself? If I gave it up to God the way God asked me to, well, why didn't it multiply? Why didn't it render the dividends that I was hoping for? Surely you felt no different than Peter, but in life's gaps, you have to apply those things that we talked about earlier. You have to trust God. You have to know that God loves loves you because guess what the word of God says I will never leave you nor forsake you and even when Peter was weeping and he thought that the Lord had abandoned him that's when God was working on his behalf all the more that's when Jesus was tackling and taking on the cross that's when Jesus was allowing his blood to be shed so that even after Peter would die that he would lift up his eyes and be risen in heaven that's when Jesus was working on Peter's behalf the most. When Peter was weeping, when Peter felt alone, when Peter felt, I mean, after all, Jesus Christ was doing all the praying. After all, Jesus Christ was doing all the fasting. Peter was, was like, look, we need the shepherd. He's been praying for us. He's been fasting for us. He's been covering us. He's been feeding us. So at that time, when Peter felt neglected, Jesus was taking on a greater cause. Jesus only went just for that period to overtake that cross so that when Peter died, he would still have everlasting life. Jesus went to take on the cross, my gosh, so that he would come back with all power and authority so that Peter could be able to trample over scorpions and trample over serpents. And it says even right here, let's get to the good part. So when Peter mm -hmm. felt betrayed the most, Jesus was doing just 
this. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I say that to you even on today. You might feel like God has left you by yourself. You might feel like you're in that gap all by yourself. But just like the Lord went just for a period to establish a greater covenant for Peter, that is what the Lord is doing for you. He's establishing something greater than what you lost. He's putting together a masterpiece. He's putting together a miracle of a door that you're getting ready to walk in. He's getting ready to prepare something that eyes have not seen seen nor have ears heard what it is the goodness and of course I'm paraphrasing that God is getting ready to do for you so for that little gap that Peter was left for that little gap that you have suffered know that the presence of God is with you as he is preparing something greater walk in the love of God the same love that drove him up to the cross to die on the cross for your sins enough to be able to say that it is finished if Jesus did not have step the cross, if Jesus did not neglect the cross on your behalf, if Jesus went all the way to the end to say that it is finished for the cross, surely he will go all the way to the end to restore your marriage, to restore your peace, to restore your healing, to restore and give you double for your shame, to give you more of what you lost. If he went all the way up and said it is finished on that cross. Now, if he was going to quit, he would have quit at the cross but he did not quit at the cross because he said nevertheless not my will but your will so he put his will to the side to finish the cross and if he could do the cross and accomplish the cross so that you can live life lasting and more abundantly if he could finish the cross on your behalf surely he can finish this miracle that you're waiting in between surely he can finish this promotion surely he can finish this blessing because your God loves you enough to not only die on the cross but to see you walking in complete and total victory even in the area of your life's gaps I leave you with this word that Jesus spoke to Peter I hear him speaking it even so more to us I want you all to share the video it says and remember so when you are in life's gaps and remember I am with you always even to the end of the age, no matter what it looks like, no matter the devastation, no matter what's going on, it says very clearly, I am with you always. Jesus is with us always, even unto the end of the age. Do not doubt God has already worked it out. If he overcame the cross for you, what is it, this small matter that is set before you, that he's not gone before you to prepare to overcome so that he can get all the glory and all the honor as it relates to your life, as he loves you just that much to do just that. We thank God today. Share the video. Be blessed.